In the last video, we covered the origins of the sandworms and we discussed three probable genesis stories for the Shai Hulud on Arrakis. Do check it out later if you haven't seen it. Here in this one, we will do quite the opposite and showcase the ultimate fate of the Dune sandworms and also the destiny of their planet Arrakis in the Dune Saga, written by Frank Herbert, not including the expanded work by McNally, Brian and Anderson, which made slight changes that are contradictory. So in our previous video, we came to the conclusion that the sandworms might have been a genetically engineered species meant to produce spice and was introduced to the planet of Arrakis in the distant past as by the words of Leto II. The sand trout life stage of this creature insisted and trapped all the water in that planet underground and in turn terraformed the surface into a vast desert full of sand dunes. There the worms thrived and exploded in population, occupying every inch of space in the planet except for the northern and southern polar regions. We have estimated in another earlier video that the worms population there, including the young juveniles, would be in the hundreds of thousands and the sand trouts would be in the millions or even billions. Anyway, this was the golden age of the worms on that planet, where they were worshipped by the freemen and lived for thousands of years, growing to momentous sizes, with the grandfather of the desert reaching 2.4 kilometers long or 1.5 miles, half a league. They could reach these sizes due to the fact that they were left alone to thrive without being killed or endangered by otherworldly human forces. In fact, it is a strong theory that they were actually introduced there on Dune for the sole purpose of generating this spice. This in turn allowed the navigators to prop up and form the spacing guild, rendering thinking machines in space travel obsolete. The planet was actually a lush paradise in the ancient times, and the sand trouts terraformed the planet into a desert world that we saw in the movies. So for thousands of years, the sandworms were the most important organisms in the entire Imperium. Yeah, they were worshipped as gods by the freemen, them being considered as the Shai Hulud. But for the Imperium at large, their sole importance is their life cycle and their continued propagation so as to generate spice blows and thus enhancing spice production, which had become not just an essential good for interstellar travel but had crept into the lives of the highborn as a drug and a rejuvenation compound extending the very lives of those partaking in it. So as you can see, the sandworms actually were beyond valuable to everyone in this interstellar empire. They were gods, they were spice producers and at times even powerful weapons of war. Now 26 years after the start of Paul's Jihad and after the years of the great interstellar war that took the lives of more than 60 billion people, Paul's son, born of Chani, whose name is Leader II and brother to Ghanima, comes to age in Children of Dune. This Leto in the novel and the previous movie adaptations would merge with the sand trouts and they would wrap around his body like an armored exoskeleton, granting him enhanced powers and endurance. This would be the start of a 3,500 year long existence in symbiosis with these organisms. At that time, the status of sandworms were pretty much the same. They were still considered as the Shai Hulud. But now Leto had begun to climb up the ladder of his house as the new emperor and with the extended lifespan he would be given, coupled with his great prescient powers, he would become the God Emperor. Now Leda bounded to honor his fathers and bloodlines oaths to the freemen that followed and won them their seat in the empire, this promise of bringing forth a green paradise that they had prayed for and hoped for. For in the words of Paul himself, the freemen have the word of Muad'Dib, there will be flowing water here open to the sky and green oasis rich with good things. This means that the planet would be terraformed and this would, as you would guess, wouldn't be a spa treatment to the Shai Hulud to be honest. This terraforming of Dune into the Freeman's Paradise caused the sandworms their habitat and thus with water being highly toxic to the giant creatures, they would begin to die out in massive numbers. By the time of the end of the Children of Dune, the friendly desert, which at once spread from pole to pole, was reduced by half of its former size. So as you can see, the habitat had begun to shrunk and with it, the deaths of many of the sandworms. By the time of the end of the God Emperor of Dune, which takes place 3,500 odd years after Leto became the ruler of the known universe, the sandworms which had lived on that planet for thousands of years had actually all died out. The Dune planet had been converted into a lush green world, therefore there was no actual habitat for the Shai Hulud to even survive they had more or less become extinct in the wild. 
but they were not truly completely wiped out. The god emperor, Leto Atreides by this time, had become a worm creature, the last worm, and he measured by dimensions, 7 meters or 23 feet long, 2 meters or 6.5 feet wide, and equally as tall. When he first merged with the sand trouts, the worm's nerves and cilia merged with his own body, thereby granting him supernatural reflexes and awareness. Three and a half millennia on, this human form had shrunk to only a head, and also with functional arms, with him frequently getting subconscious reflexes that he cannot control, which signaled the next stage in the worm's life cycle. In the end of God Emperor of Dune, a descendant of Leto who was called Siona Atreides, alongside a Duncan Idaho Gola, aided in the death and the final rest of the God Emperor. Drowning him in the Idaho River in Arrakis, they finally put an end to the tyrant's reign. Leto, however, had foreseen this, seeing that his death and devolution back to the Sand Trouts was a necessary step on the Golden Path, one that would fulfill his own fate and secure humanity. The Sand Trouts which were released back into the planet now had more concentration of nerve ganglia. They were more aware, they were more sentient than their previous generations. They are now an evolved form, a breed of new worms that had the essence of the God Emperor in them. They were thus more hardy and were successful in the gradual reversal terraforming and repopulation in Arrakis, which was later renamed as Arrakis after Leto's death. Immediately after this came what was known as the Scattering, which was a major historical event that occurred in the chaotic period following the death of Leto Atreides II, the God Emperor. Leto's death saw the eventual breakdown of his empire, severe famine on many worlds and the introduction of the Ixian no ships. So during the Scattering, the Bene Gesserit and others got a hold of quite a number of sand trouts and juvenile sandworms. In their dispersal to the unknown reaches of space, they began seeding worlds with the sandworms, but unfortunately, there was no success in this endeavor, as all the worms released onto different worlds immediately died out, even on ones that were desert worlds and resembled Rakis greatly. Fortunately, by the time of the Heretics of Dune which takes place 1500 years after the death of Leto, Rakis had once again become a desert planet which was again the center of spice production in the galaxy. This was the second golden era of the worms on that planet. However, after the scattering, there arose a faction from the unknown void of space, and they were known as the Ordent Matre, with abilities similar to the sisterhood the Bene Gesserit. In these factions struggle for power, their hunt for Duncan's Gola and control of spice, a great tragedy would befall on Rakis. Driven by a faith in the backup utility of the Telelaxis artificial spies, the Ornit Matre unleashed their incinerator weapons of mass destruction on Rakis, turning the crust of that planet into molten slag, and with it came the end for the entirety of the sandworms and all life there on that planet, driven to extinction yet again. But, but there's a big but, there was one last captured specimen taken off world by the Bene Gesserit and it was released in an artificial biome in Planet Chapter House, which was the base of operations for the Sisterhood. And against all odds and maybe by the will of the God Emperor's subconscious will inside of it, the sandworm bursted into sand trolls that began terraforming the Planet Chapter House into the next dune, and thus the species managing to escape oblivion yet again. Now that's all about the extinction and final fate of the sandworms of Dune. So if you like this video then check this other one as well and do check out our channel for other monster content. We might have things you haven't seen before. Like, subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Take care fam.